What's up guys, Brandon here, subscriptions talk video, subscriptions released the 10th, pretty sure, I should probably get that before I do this because I never know, but uh, kind of a surprise here for me, if anybody has watched my videos, I got a couple different books that that I haven't gotten before, it's things that I've just, you know, trying to try some new things, but first off, uh, pick up a book that I didn't want to you know, it's a new release that I didn't want to add into the rating system because I feel it's not fair. And that is uh, Haunted Horror number 1. And uh, this collects some old 50s comics that were banned, actually, when they came out. And uh, the books that are reprinted are uh, Weird Tear number 1, Magazines, Magazine is Haunted number 4, Baffling Mysteries number 6, Black Magic number 31, Web of Evil number 5, and Crime Detector number 5. Now, these books are awesome. These, these stories are awesome. They're just old horror stories. One of them's actually art, art by uh, Jack Kirby, so that's even a double bonus. And I just couldn't pass this up. If you're into the old Golden Age kind of horror stories, I would recommend picking this up if you, you know, don't have the cash to get the actual books because it's a good way to read them, man. It's, you know, it's exactly reprinted. They're not changed in any way. Also, this cover is awesome. It reminds me of the... Um, the image for the Misfits Die Die My Darling. And I'm not sure where that original image came from, but that's the first place I saw it was in the Misfits Die Die My Darling. But, but this was awesome. And it was only $3.99, and this thing is huge. I like, guess this thing is super thick. But, yeah, anybody, I recommend that. Now, to the actual books. L rated from my least favorite to most favorite, starting with my least favorite this week, which would be Wolverine number 314. And it wasn't a bad book. It wasn't bad. Although, I just... Maybe there's some story somewhere that I don't know about. Because they were talking about characters in here that I've never even heard of. Like The Sleeping Maiden. And um, Bloodstone, I think, was another one in here. And uh, The Covenant. I've never known any of these people. And they're talking about them like I should know their entire histories, backstories, everything. So, I mean... It was okay... But it wasn't. It, I didn't know anything about it. It opens up with Wolvie at the Jean Grey, the, uh, the Jean Grey school, trying to find out, you know, figure out some of his lost memories that were cut away when he fought that Doctor Rot. But it was just, it was just a little weird for me because I didn't know any of the people they were talking about. You know, I, I, I hope that, you know, maybe they'll eventually explain it, or if this is just going to be a story that I'm not going to understand. If it turns out to be that, I might just end it right now and just wait for um, Savage Wolverine to come out and then hop on that. But I just hope it gets better. That's all. I have, that's all I have to say about that book. Deadpool sixty two. Um, it's a Deadpool book. It it's towards the end of this run, so you can tell it was kind of just like thrown together. But it it was all right. I mean, most of it was just like a simulation fight with uh, Slayback and T Ray there. And uh, a, a, an imitation Deadpool that was, you know, kind of like the Danger Room. It was a, like a replacement for the Danger Room. And uh, there's some funny banter between Deadpool and Taskmaster in this one. But other than that, I mean, nothing too exciting here. It's a Deadpool book. It was a fun read. Here's one of those new books I was talking about that I picked up that isn't really my style. And that is Point of Impact, number one, from Image Comics. It's part of a four-part miniseries. It's kind of a crime drama. And if you can tell by this cover here with the girl being tossed off of the roof there, that's how the story opens. It opens with a young girl crashing, well she's not really young, but crashing into the roof of a car. And it, they try to figure out how it was done and you know the trajectory is all wrong for falling or running and jumping. But they've deduced that throwing is the best, you know, easiest way to explain it. Um, upon returning home, her husband returns home, you know, from a long night at the office, he's, he's a reporter on the newspaper, and he returns to find that she's not there, but there is a strange masked man there, and a scuffle ensues, They're, they fight, they exchange blows, and then he catches a glimpse of, like, a military type of marine tattoo on the guy's arm, but the guy eventually, you know, grabs the computer and makes away, it, uh, that's when the detective arrived to tell him that his wife's actually dead and then you know what happened and everything and it shows the man with the tattoo on the phone with somebody saying that you know he's still alive but i got the computer 
Um, another detective calls into the two detectives to tell them that upon retrieving all the information from her cell phone, the dead woman's cell phone, they found a voicemail from a strange ex-military man. And it shows the picture of him at the end, and it's the guy with the military tattoo on his arm. So, I mean, it was a good book. It uh, It's going to be a good story, I feel. I'm not really into these type of crime books, but I, I got pretty into this. And also, I'm not a fan of the black and white art. The thing is, is uh, my old lady wanted me to pick up this book up, and then there's another book in the thing. She saw my previous book, and she wanted a few books to you know try out, so I'm not going to deny her trying to get into comics. But, I mean, kudos to her for choosing this, because I would have never read this myself, and it was actually a good read. I can't wait for the next one. X-Men number 37. Um, this is the second part of the two-part kind of proto-mutant wrap-up story for this. Um, and it ended as, a, as abruptly and awkwardly as it started. The, the, the two-part series, that is. Because it kind of just happens. I mean, it, it seems that, that the proto-mutant you know, story is kind of the secondary story behind the relationship dynamic between Colossus, Storm, and Cyclops. That triangle of, you know power, I guess you could say, but uh, the relationship between Colossus and Storm, as you can tell here by the cover, it actually boils over, and they co they come to blows in the issue, actually, because um, Colossus says if Storm would have listened to Scott to begin with, it would have been fine, and Storm still wants to, you know, be her own leader, doesn't want to listen to Scott, but, I mean, it's kind of weird, this happening, because, you know, it's kind of an alternate universe, almost, because, obviously, after AVX, Scott is incarcerated, if you will, but, um, yeah, the, the, the proto-mutant kind of just disappears, he's talking to Pixie, and he says, I'm going somewhere better, just kind of disappears, and then at the end, Pixie's reflecting on what happened, it just, it, it ended very, very abruptly for me, and it wasn't that great of a wrap-up, although I did like to see the, the little, you know, dynamic between these two go a little farther, and just because I hate, you know, Cyclops, I, I just, I, I have to root for Storm, even though I was never a big Storm fan. Um, Avengers, number 31, The End Times. And I feel like if you're going to do one of these End Times, get your own logo. This is, this, like, the same logo from the Disassembled. Um, I think, I think I heard Captain Cummings say something about it, that he thought the same thing, but... It is. It's the same. It's the same logo. Even end times, where it says end times, you put disassembled in there, and this could be a disassembled cover. It just. I mean, the book itself was good, but I don't get the cover. Um, it starts off. There's some weird Star Wars stuff going on. I didn't understand what was going on. There's a mysterious, like, shrouded woman running just from these ships or whatever. And then uh, there's actually a nice inside story which I really enjoyed, where um. Wonder Man comes back, and he's trying to apologize to Cap for everything he's done for destroying the tower. And um, in trying to apologize, Red Hulk comes and attacks him. And, you know, they battle, they fight a little bit, and Wonder Man actually just subdues him. Like, just basically chokes him out. And it just, it was, it was boggling to me, because I, I knew Wonder Man was strong from his times with the West Coast Avengers. But when he just took down the Red Hulk as easily as, like, without even, without even losing stride, he just took down the Red Hulk... It was pretty unbelievable. And then, um, and then it switches back to the kind of shrouded woman story where she has an Avengers card and she puts out the emergency, you know, emergency responders sound or whatever. Tony gets it and they find out that she's in inner space. There's an Avenger in inner space. And I can't really figure out who this is. I tried to look it up. I mean, not look it up, but I tried to, you know, look at her, study the book a little bit and. I don't know, so maybe 32 is going to be a bit of a surprise for everybody. The book everybody's talking about, Uncanny Avengers number 1. Now, I was really excited about this book because of Scarlet Witch. I'm a huge Scarlet Witch fan. Although, with what happened in this book, with her being stabbed, I wonder how that's going to play out. But, I think Havoc, as the leader of the mutants, as the representative for the mutants, is awesome. I'm a huge Havoc fan, just basically because him and Cyclops never got along. So, huge Havoc fan. This team is pretty awesome, I'm not going to lie. It's pretty incredible. And I, I hope that the dynamic between them 
kind of changes a little bit. Because what's going on now is kind of the generic, you know, Hope is mad at Scarlet like she's always been, everybody is, and, you know, Thor and Cap are just kind of like, well, they're both kind of gods, <laughs> because nobody really messes with Cap either. But the one thing I want to say about this book is it opens up with Wolverine giving a eulogy for um, Professor X. Now, I know that he was really close with him, but I'm pretty sure there's other people <laughs> that can speak better than Wolverine, although he did do a good job, and you could tell it was heartfelt from him. It's just, I feel like there's better people out there that could have gave it, like people that are more that are more well-spoken. That was my only issue with that, the little bit. But, um, the mutants are back, and Red Skull is controlling kind of a team of them, and he actually has Professor X's brain. So, that just doesn't bode well for anybody. But, I'm pumped for the next one. I'd like to get a couple more of those covers. There were some pretty sweet Scarlet Witch covers, but they're like 1 in 100 variants, and I'm not paying $40 for a, for a cover. It's just not going to happen. And then, the pick of the week, which nobody will expect, was Transfusion, number one. This book absolutely blew me away. The art alone is just stunning. It's from um, Menton 3. I've never heard of it. It's probably like some computer generated or something, but it actually looks painted to a bit. It's um, written by Steve Niles, and it's uh, Vampires vs. Robots. And it's just an incredible book. The art in here alone is worth a pickup. If there was no dialogue, if it was just the art, I would still buy this book. I mean, it's just, it's phenomenal. There's, uh, it's in the future, it's in the kind of a, a desolate wasteland future where robots actually have to, you know, eat human blood for nourishment. Like, that's how they survive, is the human blood. And, in the same sense, that's also what the vampires survive on. And that's pretty much all there is. There's these little groups of humans, I guess, around, and the vampires kind of compete with the robots for this blood. And it shows that there's a nice battle between a robot and a vampire in here. And I can't wait for the next one. I'm pretty sure this is a four-part miniseries also, but I would like to see more. And I'd like to see more of this guy's artwork, because it is phenomenal. I recommend anybody, because I'm, I'm pretty sure not a lot of people pick this up. But this, this is one that, that my girlfriend told me to get. She wanted it. She thought it was awesome. And I cannot give her more credit for picking this book, because it blew me away. And, you know, you know me, I'm a superhero guy, you know, maybe a horror comic here every now and then, but I, I usually don't get into this kind of, you know, smaller press titles. I'm usually a big two guy, but really enjoyed this, and you can obviously tell by I, I made it the pick of the week. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think, and uh, remember, have a great day.